What's up? My name's Glue Boy. Welcome back to the channel. And uh, today we got a follow up, another follow up video. We're going to be talking about the Thousand Suns since we talked about Magnus the Red earlier, their Primarch. And I'm going to make a little experiment. I understand to do proper YouTube etiquette, you're supposed to ask to subscribe now. Do that. Anyways, the actual video. So, first and foremost, if you want more of the history of the Thousand Suns, go watch my Magnus video. Like any Space Marine chapter or Legion, their Primarch story is really integral and is kind of like the main plot you're following until the Horus Heresy ends. The Thousand Suns were created from the remnants of the Ahmed Empire down on Terra back in the good old days. As when Big E conquered all of Terra, he went around gathering more people to turn into his Space Marines. These guys got off pretty easily. They pretty quickly aligned with the Emperor and also were naturally psychically in tune. So he picked the best of the best and created the 15th Legion, the Thousand Suns. Though they weren't called that because the Thousand Suns got their name from a slightly more morbid situation. Now, the whole thing with them being naturally psychically inclined caused some issues as they had a good old three point problem. First, their gene suit came from Magnus, a powerful psyker. Second, they were psychically potent. And third, uh, their gene seed repositories and themselves were impacted by a giant warp storm on the moon. Now all three of these warp related elements mixed together and caused an issue called the flesh change, which rapidly mutated all that, that warp energy inside you and reduced you into a chaos spawn. This thing, a bad situation, which of course, once they got to Prospero and found Magnus, there were only a thousand left, hence the thousand suns, and Magnus thought he could find a way to cure the flesh change. He did, though temporarily, because that came part of Zinch's whole plan. So after the whole deal with Zinch, where Magnus was raised to demonhood and they were whisked away to their new home, the planet of the sorcerers, they sat out on the Horus Heresy, went around killing some space wolves, having a good time. Magnus got his revenge by killing the then like chapter master of the space wolves. Good deal. And eventually the great scouring happened. The siege of Terra failed, Horus dead, and they all ran away. And uh, say you have a disease or affliction that is strictly powered by just warp energy. Now, the last place you should go with that kind of problem is the warp. That was a safe place. That's where they ran. So the flesh change started coming back real strong. And it was affecting most of the Legion to the point where with the reduced numbers because of all the casualties in the Siege of Terra and the flesh change, it was going to be pretty quick till there was no more Legion left. So in stepped in Azek Araman, absolute Chad and the best Psyker in the Thousand Suns other than Magnus himself. Now, Chief Librarian Azek Araman is a very important character character that's going to get his own video later, especially once I finish his books, because I'm curious. I like Armin a lot. He's great. So Armin also, just some preemptive stuff, is the like champion of Zinj. Same way that Karn, Typhus, and Lucius are, he's that. One of the main differences is uh, Armin absolutely despises Zinj, much like Magnus does, something Zinj adores. He loves it when his champions hate him. Armin was around from like the very beginning and he saw the flesh change firsthand and it affected people he cared about, like some good friends of his. So he dedicated a lot of his free time, if not all of his free time to fixing the flesh change and eventually led him to the Book of Magnus, which essentially is a book written by Magnus that is a giant textbook on Psyker lore and spells. It's something he personally wrote arm and poured over it, obsessed over it, and eventually found a fix. Something that would later be dubbed the Rubric of Armin. So Armin got to work with this possible fix. He found a spell that seemed to work perfectly. On some very minuscule testing, it worked out really well. He found a way to harness the warp itself to cause permanent fixes and mutations of his design on people. So he could reverse the flesh change permanently. At least if these small little tests he did proved to be right. He gathered up a cabal of sorcerers around him against Magnus's will and with Magnus not even knowing and set to work. Now, here's a question. Have you ever seen Full Metal Alchemist? Because uh, Araman got in his little circle, clapped his hands and 
reduce the entirety of the Thousand Suns to dust, as the spell got out of control very fast, and did in fact fix the flesh change. By powering them up with so much just warp energy, they disintegrated, at least to everyone that weren't powerful psychers. And uh, they found themselves now disintegrated, and the souls couldn't leave the armor. They were stuck there. And uh, shit got out of control very fast. As uh, Magnus, he bore the full brunt of this. As it was all cast on every single Thousand Sun, man's the most powerful psyker in there, he feels all of that pain and immediately reverses the spell because Armin lost control of it. It was too powerful, too torrential, to the point where demons themselves ran away from it. It was too terrifying and led to a big old confrontation because Magnus came storming right over and yelling at Armin, ready to murder him. Armin was kind of acting like a tool, saying, I did the right thing for the Legion. I succeeded where you failed. I'm better than you. And Magnus was about to just cut him down, but Zeech stepped in, two little like tentacles part in the way, like, hey, I need this guy. He's cool, he's mine. You don't get to kill him, Magnus. And instead decided to exile Armin. And eventually, Armin did actually realize the thing he did, as, yeah, he saved the Legion, but now they were just automata. All those just destroyed members of the Legion, now dubbed Rubric Marines, are essentially just robots. Like that's all they kind of serve as. They don't have a personality anymore or any will. They just do what they're ordered to do. And a lot of times they're kind of mentally controlled by sorcerers that lead their squads. To the point where there's a fun little stratagem I really like because I think it orchestrates the point. Uh, it's like a thousand years in wait or something where it's a way to deep strike your units and get them where you want early because a psyker in your army foretold a battle hundreds of years in the future. So he buried a set of rubrics somewhere. So they'll pop out when he needs them. So yeah, Armin horribly regrets his actions and is actively trying to work to undo it. His now work is to revive the Legion, which is why he's so gung-ho about getting in the Black Library, the source of like all lore controlled by the Harlequin Eldar. He wants to get in there real bad. They're stopping him, but apparently he got a book out in the Eldar Codex. Even in the other Codex, they can't get a win. And honestly, that's the Thousand Suns in a nutshell. There's other bits you can follow. I think, uh, just looking into it, there are three main stories that you can follow inside of the Thousand Suns. Magnus's story, you can follow. Azek Ahriman or Iskander Kaon, which is just, do you want to follow Magnus trying to beat up Gilman and destroy Fenris? Ahriman trying to redeem himself and come back into the Legion? And also, trying to supplant Zinch, because that's one of his current plans. And uh, Iskander Kaon, who was one of the founding members of the Black Legion. Take a, take a wild guess which one I like. But I think all of those can go into them on their own time. That's the bare minimum you need to know about Thousand Suns. So let's go right into the rules. So this one is a fun topic to go over because I used to play Thousand Suns. I don't anymore. Uh, no like issue with the army itself. It doesn't fit my playstyle. Because one of the things with the Thousand Suns that's both fun for people who like this and not fun for me is there are a lot, lot of moving parts. Because a lot of your abilities are giving out buffs and debuffs. And keeping track of that sucks. I really recommend finding a third party way of getting little like button markers or writing them down. You need to find a way to manage the multitude of buffs and debuffs you can give out. There are like four different avenues you can go down and some really strong combos if you actually work through it. But like any standalone Chaos Army, they have a lot of their own parts that are separate from the normal Chaos Marine Codex. One of the main ones is their Cabalistic Rituals. Now, every single Psyker you field and which one you have on the battlefield will accumulate points. And this point goes into a pool where you can access all of these rituals. Now, you can do these in your Psychic Phase. You just have your points and you can spend them as you wish, each Psychic Phase. However, anything you don't spend is gone, so spend all the points you can. There are some really good ones, but I think, like thankfully, they're all solid enough and useful enough in their own moments that I don't think there's any here that are like garbage. And then next up, like any faction, you have your sub-factions. These are gonna be your different cults. Now, there are nine of them in total 
And uh, I'm not gonna go into all of them because boring and that's a lot. So I'm gonna go over some of my favorites and some of the better ones. And the first one I gotta pick right off the bat is the meta pick. This one got a lot of use in Warzone Nephilim and is currently in the newer tournament stuff getting use in Ark to Omen. That's gonna be your Cult of Duplicity. Now this one is all about redeploying and tricksy stuff. That's very useful. Mainly you're a very shooty army. So anything that lets you redeploy your shooty troops, handy. Also, regen and command points is a beautiful rule that is always a must take in any army. So important. And then we got my favorite, the Cult of Time, because the greatest magic of all is Chronomancy. Now this one is fun because it turns your Psyker or multiple Psykers into an Apothecary. Allows you to heal, bring back a unit, nice. Also gives you a chance to cast another spell or bring back your Warlord when he dies. Handy tool. And then last one I'll give is the Cult of Scheming because you're a Zinch army, gotta be scheming. And they got some handy stuff. Shoot and charge after falling back, uh, an obsec aura that I think is really useful, a free stratagem use, which is just one free CP. It's like a worse version of the duplicity one. Solid, I don't think this one is as like ridiculously strong as some of the others. I think it's just a solid option if you need something. And list building. Now, currently I would recommend bringing Zinch Flamers. Bring some demons along. It's serving really useful. Zinch Flamers are already really strong right now. Look into it. As well, you're gonna wanna bring a lot of Terminators. These dudes are fucking scary. Some of the strongest Terminators I think in the game. Have fun with that. And you want to bring flamers. Flamers are goofy strong with Thousand Suns due to some combos you can pull. Good shit. And uh, lastly, I will recommend this. If you're not completely sure, do not bring Menegus. You can field him, you can have fun with him. He has a rule where he can cast every single spell in like the book. He's a great psychic unit. However, there are multiple armies that can take him out turn one. You've just wasted like a whole lot of points. So unless you really know what you're doing or know you're not playing into Tower Votan, don't br bring this big red man. But yeah, that's the Thousand Suns. Uh, you enjoyed, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Uh, see ya.